very interesting to have the opportunity to present my paper after Cohen's one, because he has been uh, talking about uh, computational thinking, decoding, and back. And I'm back, a thousand steps back, to speak about a philosophical and ethical approach to computational thinking to a second stage, maybe next year, um, taking this uh, philosophical and ethical reflection on computational thinking to a cutting um, stage of this work I will present you. So with this, I'm, uh, I'm starting by the conclusions. And uh, I have to ask, uh, especially Common and Fran, and I will accept in advance all their punishments because I forgot to, to, take the, the, to, uh, to paste the Tackle 3 and the EU logos here, so please, but uh, take you into account that this experience is uh, within Tackle 3 code, uh, maybe with a slightly different approach, but not so much, as you will see. And uh, so let me introduce myself. Um, um, I am a researcher at Real Group and also assistant uh, teacher here at the, this educational faculty where I teach um, uh, educational uh, counseling and guidance, but I'm also a secondary school teacher in philosophy from 20 years ago, so this is, it's, it's, a, it's strange, but it is even more strange if I tell you that I've been uh, researching with uh, Francisco Garcia Peñalbo for more than 10 years on um, architecture patterns for managing uh, um, e-learning uh, institutions, uh, so it's just to let you be aware. And uh, I will divide my presentation in a brief introduction on this uh, experience and a couple of minutes uh, putting my position on computational thinking and machine ethics. That way I will show you a brief presentation of my training in action to finally show you some discussion and, and conclusions. Do uh, you remember this film? Do you remember 2001 Space Odyssey? Maybe you are too young, but <laughs> it's 1968. And uh, if you remember this uh, final, almost final scene of the film, where Dave is the only, the, the only survivor of the ship because HAL 9000 discovered, realized that all of them are planning to disconnect computer because its primary directive is to accomplish its mission but the second uh, uh, rule is protecting human life but just in this order, second, protecting human life and when the crew realize that they can't accomplish the mission because it is too risky, obviously there is an ethical, uh, uh, a moral dilemma. And for the machine it's really clear. And when they is the only one survivor outside the ship, and he asks, Hal, can you read me? Open the port bay doors. The machine said, yes, I read you perfectly. But I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can do that. Just this way. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can do that. The mission, my mission, is too important for letting you to jeopardize it. This is a moral dilemma. And maybe in 1968, or maybe in uh, uh, iRobot Asimov's 1914, something, it could be just sci fi. But nowadays it is not sci-fi anymore. And this presentation is about moral discussion on how moral machines, especially uh, self-driving vehicle, um, vehicles, should behave when we have to decide to run over a pedestrian or kill ourselves. Mercedes-Benz was the first to uh, say, to state it clearly, I will protect the owner. I will respect less from Mercedes-Benz. 
did you, did you hear it? A couple of years ago, Mercedes-Benz said, my cars will protect, my ethical position is egoistic. You pay for a Mercedes-Benz, you will be protected. If you have a Renault, maybe you have to have some moral discussions, but if you have a Mercedes, you don't have any discussion. You will be protected. You have been paying for a high standing and secure, secure car. Okay, go away. And just to introduce the, the, the question, the problem, we have been discussing, as Francisco said at, at the beginning, we have been discussing on the key competencies, and there are still a lot of discussions in Europe about how to approach these key competencies. And this is maybe a little bit off topic, but in Spain, at least in Spain, we are still discussing if PISA proofs are the means or the end of our key competences definition. I won't say any word more, but just to, to, to put the discussion on the table. And there is also, as I've been said here this afternoon, the need for fostering STEM competences. It is obvious, we need it. And the high rates of uh, um, the lack of students in uh, engineering uh, type, uh, grades and degrees and the uh, low skills of our students clearly states that we need to foster to improve these STEM skills. But the question is that, as Coleman Burrow said, we don't need more computer science subjects as the guarantee, the guarantee to ensure that we will have better uh, computer things skilled students. So STEM, uh, STEM skills are not enough, and as we will try to uh, demonstrate now, scale, oh, sorry, STEM skills are not just a, a matter of STEM subjects. We can approach STEM subjects from ethics at school, as I will try to show you later. So we need a more holistic approach on key competencies. And as Cohen Burrell said, computation and thinking is not the way machines learn, but the way we humans learn, and we humans fail. So we cannot reduce uh, computation and thinking to coding, as very well uh, has been said here. And we have to uh, approach a broader use. What uh, we are planning to do is to use computational thinking as a pedagogical strategy for posing and solving problems, especially in my field in ethics. And the, uh, the, the applications go into a very technological uh, problem, but the uh, coding solution will come uh, in a second stage of this, of this uh, learning activity. So we plan to use computational thinking to approach, to explain, and to resolve the dilemmas of that so-called moral machines. And you very well know the three rules of robotics, as Asimov stated, and this, this was once sci-fi, but this is now a, a problem. It's very interesting when I, when I say to my student, what should do a robot that have the prime directive to protect human life and not harming them when this robot has to decide between left human and right human and both are as the Buridan's donkey at the same distance and in the same risk. The machine should block as Buridan uh, donkey uh, uh, did or not. It's a starting point for this discussion. And I try to apply computational thinking itself to uh, ethic discussions. And the first thing is to approach the, from the lots of uh, branches of ethics that my students have to study as part of the curricula, uh, utilitarianism, deontologies, uh, hedonistic. So how could we approach the uh, computational thinking decisions on ethic issues when we have different uh, ethical branches. How should we act? And as you all know, we have um, deductiv de deductivistic uh, approaches, so top-down approaches, like Kantian or utilitarian, bottom-up approaches, and hybrid approaches. 
and in this uh, in this case, I have decided to use only uh, top-down approaches because this is uh, a, a very simple way to approach the problem. It should be very difficult to think on machines that could uh, learn by themselves as we do in our life to create our own moral principles uh, based on principles on like uh, Alan Turing or Gadget or Colbert stated for moral learning in, in children. It's very difficult to, uh, to, to, to resolve this problem in an uh, ethical discussion with machines by now. Um, but why the autonomous uh, vehicle? Why, why the self-driving uh, car? Obviously, it's a, it's a, a, a very uh, current and, and trending uh, topic in our societies. We expect to have a significant uh, percent of self-driving uh, cars by 2025, so tomorrow in the morning. So we have to face the problem. As, and as you probably know, the main difficulty now to achieve uh, uh, the, a broader use of such devices is not a question of technology, it's a moral and sociological question. We, we have to develop more satellite technology and maybe some coding to these cars and some uh, internet of the things to, 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 to have them working. But the main problem is what should the machine do? when some unavoidable accidents and crashes will be real. How should they behave? And that's the real problem. That's why I think it's a very, very interesting problem to put to my ethics students at school. And uh, before, before um, explaining the, the experience, I will um, tell you a couple of details on the decision-making models. There are lots of uh, artificial, in, uh, artificial intelligence decision-making models and they are all of them very complex to use uh, them with my purpose of uh, solving ethical problems. And uh, models of uh, belief disorientations and data and many others are very, very difficult. Maybe more for me than for my students, but uh, very difficult to use it as uh, moral decision making. And another philosophical decision making models are also very, very unuseful because they are not computational uh, structured. So we cannot use uh, many of the models uh, actually in use in nursery and medicine for solving moral dilemmas because they are based upon discussion and we cannot discuss. We have to program one, zero, or an uncertainty. And we have to, to ask a machine to decide. The machine cannot discuss up to the moment, and it cannot behave as a discussion of actor. So our framework uh, has reduced the question to two approaches, consequentialist and non-consequentialist, with a clear definition for any uh, of them in order to program in the future on um, Arduino or a scratch device to act uh, in, in, in this way. With an utilitarianism approach, the best action will be that which provides the best or does the less harm. Egoist, self protection, Mercedes, the best or nothing, for me and the rest, <laughs> never mind. Profit very second, it's a very interesting discussion. Should we uh, prefer to um, harm six children, not very seriously, and protecting uh, one motorcycle's uh, uh, life, or should we prefer killing one of them and uh, avoid harming six, seven, ten children? If we ask from a humanistic approach, maybe we should prefer some harm, but nobody will die. If we ask an insurance company, this is a very ethical problem, comparing insurance, maybe it's cheaper paying for one death better than paying for 
10 or 15 children injured. It's cheaper, so it's ethically better. better. It's debatable, isn't it? And finally, uh, non-consequentialist theories. I have also this one, the last one, I think it's very interesting, in cases where we cannot decide and we have to discuss, okay, let's take a point to the air and let's see a chance. Because there's, there's also a problem. If I know how a machine should behave in a certain way, I can provoke car accidents because I know how a machine will, will act. And this is, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a very, very frightening problem. I can know how the machine will act and I, and I can push the machine to act in that way, provoking unmoral results. And, or, or this one, the best should come to those who uh, act according to the rules. If you go and if you cross a street where there's no uh, light, green light for you, you will pay for the consequences. So, this is the layout tab uh, for students on 14 to 16 years, and here you can see, here you can see the tools and resources, the aim of the the overview, the title, I want um, to uh, detail this, this part of the, the the train action. I will ask you briefly the sessions of this train action. First, the first session will uh, ask my students to discuss a uh, newspaper, a real newspaper article on the title Would you buy a car that should kill you to save other lives? Just to open mind and discuss this question. And then I will ask them to study in this MIT uh, simulator with different scenarios, uh, not with a moral approach, but with a sociological approach. What should you do? Just tell you. And, and you can see only two scenarios, and you can choose left or right. What should you do in this case? Okay? Well, something like 15 or 20, 20 scenarios, just to open mind. Uh, then the second activity is a work group, and uh, two, uh, analyze a set of predefined scenarios uh, that I will give them uh, to, uh, as in the figure, to uh, study possible possible actors, uh, outputs, sorry, according to different ethical approaches. What should you do in case you are seeking for a solution with the less economical cost? What should you do in case you will uh, seek a solution on um, utilitarian approach? Okay? And uh, then students will have to explain their solutions according to these ethical approaches and their views on that. Then we reach to the more um, logical and, in this sense, uh, coding uh, part of the uh, training action. Um, they have to use a set of uh, agents, properties, connectors, and ethical approaches to develop their own ethical scenario. Maybe using something like Ancident oh, Sketch of Com. It's a, a web page to uh, develop uh, uh, accident scenarios. And they have to select uh, using this matrix, different agents, should you use a baby, or aut uh, autonomous vehicle, a uh, pregnant woman uh, crossing the, the, the street, and a set of properties and connectors, logical connectors, to build their reasoning. Then they have to sketch their scenario visually and formalizing in uh, logical sentences uh, the dilemma. For finally choosing different ethical approaches and uh, selecting the outputs according to these ethical approaches. For finally discussing and decision making. This is the, the, the framework I have decided to uh, put them into the situation of deciding what to do in case of uh, accident. Finally, I will show them some more complex uh, scenarios 
uh, like, like this one from Matthew Garbi. Uh, it's very, very interesting. It is not interactive, but it's very interesting how uh, this scenario uh, calculates different uh, outputs in, ter in terms of, of, of costs and uh, ethical behaviors. And uh, finally, an evaluation to you know the impact of uh, the learning with a funny uh, mobile game app, a scout, if you allow it. Uh, some conclusions. So, uh, why this framework? Why not using MIT uh, solutions? Because uh, current models applied to more machines are yet too complicated to use in every classroom. And those like uh, MIT uh, moral machines are more focused on a um, sociological approach than a priori ethical approach. And I need to approach with them a priori behavior to uh, program to the machine. Not the consequences, but the causes of these decisions. So this proposal uh, helps students defining a set of potentially infinite number of scenarios and then analyzing them with an ethical framework to, uh, to take some outputs and decide about the uh, fair or unfair uh, of, this, of this action. And so, in this way, students can put into practice computational thinking skills, but also decision-making processes, philosophical analysis, and other soft skills as teamwork, oral skills, debating skills, etc. And this is, this is the end, I promise. And so, in my opinion, compulsory school should tackle with this STEM um, skills from all subjects in a multidisciplinary approach, not only from computer science subjects. And uh, my proposal is to use it uh, with a multidisciplinary approach, starting from philosophy, from ethics, and then asking my colleagues of computer science to continue by uh, programming some uh, little machines in Arduino or Scratch to uh, see, as Colin said uh, before, how should we see this behave in uh, real machines say in real uh, non-dangerous machines, <laughs> these kind of machines, not big machines, uh, it should be funny to, 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 to run over pedestrians, really, no, I don't think so. Uh, so finally, uh, future directions of this study will move forward towards the application of these computer science subjects to let students not only think, but also visualize and program how these machines should, should um, behave in case uh, we will see them in less than 10 years running over us. If we have a Mercedes, we will be happy. If we won't have it, prepare to be run over it. Okay, <laughs> thank you.